German history is almost impossible to say objectively. When did it begin? There was no clear time for the formation of an independent German state, both in terms of race, language, and territory. Various groups and tribes, grouped under the term Germanic people, who settled before the time of antiquity in the land of present-day Germany. When Rome was the hegemon of the Mediterranean region, the Germanic tribes were still living in the primitive communal period. They were described by the Romans as warlike and barbaric people who were a formidable threat on the northern border of Rome. In 12 BC, the Roman Emperor Caesar invaded the Germania region between the Rhine and Elbe rivers. In 9 AD, the Germans, under the leadership of Chief Arminius, defeated the Roman army under the command of Governor Varus. Varus himself and many other generals had to commit suicide for fear of falling into German hands, and only a few Roman warriors escaped the dramatic battle. The remaining Roman soldiers were burned alive by the Germans, buried alive, or used as sacrifices to the gods. Arminius became the national hero of Germany, a heroic general for national liberation, staunchly fighting against the giant Roman Empire. The Germanic tribes all honored him. This glorious victory is also considered the beginning of the German national history. The Roman Emperor Tiberius ascended the throne in AD 14, again plotting to invade the land of Germania. This time, the Roman king sent the famous general Germanicus to bring his army to defeat Germania to avenge the previous defeat. It was not until the third campaign that the Romans defeated the German coalition, but Arminius survived the battle. Germanicus was still unable to do anything in Germania, supplies were scarce, and roads were not safe. On the way back to the North Sea, Germanicus's army encountered a terrible storm, destroying the Roman ships, and sending them adrift far away. The Roman king realized that the Germans were too resilient, while the Romans had failed to do anything, and had lost too many soldiers, decided never to dare to send troops to fight Germania again. During the three centuries after Arminius annihilated the Roman invaders, German society gradually evolved, appearing with two classes of free people and non-free people. In the north, the most powerful figures in the tribe held power, and so on, from father to son, while the non-free class had to be enslaved, serving the free class. The southern tribes lived here and there, with no place to live. By the middle of the third century, the small Germanic tribes had merged into more powerful alliances. Ancient Germanic society gradually developed, and the population increased. Therefore, they migrated to the Roman Empire to open their land and build a life. This migration allowed the ancient Germans to access and understand more about the brilliant Roman civilization. The Germanic tribes became increasingly powerful, threatening the Roman frontier. Many wars between the Germanic tribes and the Romans took place. Finally, in decline, the Western Roman Empire was destroyed by a Germanic leader, Odoacer, in 476. Continental Central Europe was unified during the Carolingian dynasty of the Frankish Kingdom, under King Charlemagne. After Charlemagne's death, the kingdom was divided into three in the Treaty of Verdun in 843, to his three grandchildren. The oldest brother Lothair got the middle part, including the left bank of the Rhine and the northern part of the Italian peninsula. Second brother Louis de German acquired land east of the Rhine. Youngest brother Charles the Bald acquired the western portion of the empire. France formed from the western Frankish kingdom, while Germany formed from the eastern Frankish kingdom. Although the East Frankish was not yet Germany, it at least formed a geographical framework for later Germany. After the end of the Carolingian dynasty, the nobles elected the Frankish Duke Conrad I as king in 911. He was followed by the Duke of Saxony Heinrich I from the House of Otto. Heinrich defended the kingdom against attacks by the Huns and Slavs. Heinrich I appointed his son Otto I as his successor. In 955, Otto defeated the Huns at the Battle of Lechfeld, and he also extended his dominion to many parts of Italy. In 962, Otto I was crowned by the Pope, becoming the first emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. The last Otto king, Heinrich II, had to fend off Poland and Hungary. Under him, the kingdom church system continued to expand. In 1024, Conrad II of Salier was elected emperor. During the reign of Salier, there was a power struggle between the emperor and the pope. Conrad II's successor, 
Heinrich III, deposed three rival popes, installed reformist Clemens II as pope, and let Clemens crown him emperor in 1046. Under the emperor Heinrich IV, controversy over the right to appoint bishops exploded, as those who wanted reform blamed the emperor for trafficking in church offices. Heinrich announced the removal of Pope Gregor VII. After that, the Pope again announced the expulsion of Heinrich from the religion, and at the same time met the opposing dukes to settle the dispute between the Emperor and the Pope. To solve this, Heinrich IV had to personally go to Canossa, and humbly beg the papal pardon. In 1104, he again deposed Pope Gregor, and let Pope Clemens III crown him in Rome. His son Heinrich V eventually united with the dukes against and dethroned him. A protracted war was only avoided by the death of the father in 1106. Finally, Emperor Heinrich V made peace with the church in 1122. After Heinrich V died, without an heir, the electors elected Lothar III of Supplenburg as king. The empire then fell into a period of power struggles that lasted throughout the 12th century. After Emperor Frederick I ascended the throne, the empire was temporarily at peace. However, when Friedrich led the Crusades against the Muslims, he died in Syria in 1190. The civil war for power continued to break out between the Stauffer royal family and the Welfen family. When the royal faction won, there was a dispute between the emperor and the pope. In 1268, the last of the Stauffers were publicly executed in Naples. The Stauffer family no longer has an heir. After the Stauffer dynasty, the emperor's power waned in the late Middle Ages. The electors often chose a weak candidate to be crowned king. Rudolf I of Habsburgs put an end to this in 1273. He paved the way for the Habsburgs to become one of the most powerful dynasties in the empire, but he failed to achieve the imperial crown. In 1308, Heinrich VII of Luxembourg was elected king. He expanded his power and was proclaimed emperor. After Heinrich's death, Ludwig, a bear, House of Wittelsbach, defeated the Habsburgs in the elections of 1314 and was crowned emperor in Rome. In 1338, the Council of Electors declared that the kings they elected did not need to be confirmed by the Pope. The opposition, formed by Karl IV of Luxembourg in 1346, with the support of the Pope, was elected as the opposing king by his fellow factions. However, the civil war did not last long as Ludwig suffered a stroke and died in 1347. Under the reign of Karl's successors, the king's power declined. His first son, Wenzel, was deposed by the electors in 1400 for being passive. Another son, Sigismund, was elected king in 1410. Although he was crowned emperor in 1433, he was unable to stabilize the kingdom. An empire reform failed. After Sigismund's death, the Luxembourg family no longer had any sons. The Habsburgs advanced to the throne in 1438. Under the rule of Friedrich III, the foundation for the Habsburg family's policy of expanding power was established. Through marriage, his son Maximilian I obtained the Duchy of Burgundy, which included the wealthy Netherlands. His grandson Felipe I married the heir to the vast Spanish kingdom around the world. Felipe I's son Carl V became king of both Spain and the Holy Roman Empire. The Habsburgs have risen to become one of the most powerful forces in the world. In 1517, the reform of the Roman Catholic Church broke out, due to many people's discontent over what they considered to be false doctrines and the trading of indulgences and holy orders in the Church. Europe was divided into two camps, the Protestant reformers and the Catholics. This was the cause of a series of religious wars, culminating in the Thirty Years' War, from 1618 to 1648, involving most of Europe. The war took place mainly on the territory of the Holy Roman Empire, causing Germany to be severely damaged, and the population to decrease. The empire was divided into many small countries, among them, the Principality of Prussia rose to become the most powerful domain. The power of the Holy Roman Emperor was nothing more than vanity. In 1701, the elected Marquis of Prussia, Frederick I, proclaimed himself king. In return, he allied with the Holy Roman Emperor during the War of the Spanish Succession. In 1713, King Frederick William I succeeded and implemented reforms in the Prussian government and army. He lived a simple life, and actively invested in the army, 
making the Prussian infantry the most powerful infantry force in Europe. Friedrich Wilhelm I died in 1740, passing the throne to his son Frederick II the Great. With his genius military ability, Frederick II promoted the expansion of his territory, continuously winning over the armies of England, Russia, Austria, and France, turning Prussia into a new superpower. However, by the early 19th century, the arrival of Napoleon in France brought the Holy Roman Empire to an end after 842 years. The Kingdom of Prussia also lost more than half of its territory to France. After Napoleon was defeated and forced to abdicate, the territories of European countries were returned to the status quo before the French Revolution. The 39-country German Confederacy, formed from the 300 city-states of the former Holy Roman Empire, was a loose confederation of German-speaking nations. Due to the influence of the French Revolution, in March 1848, a revolution broke out in a series of states of the German Confederacy. The masses demanded democratic rights and freedoms and desired the creation of a united Germany. However, the refusal of the Prussian King Friedrich Wilhelm IV to be crowned emperor of a parliamentary democratic Germany, caused the revolution to fail. After the death of Friedrich Wilhelm IV, his younger brother Wilhelm I succeeded him. Wilhelm I appointed Otto von Bismarck as Prime Minister of Prussia, who would later be instrumental in the reunification of Germany. In the following years, wars with Austria and France brought the German principalities together, and after victory over Napoleon III of France in the Franco-Prussian War, the German Empire was established on January 18, 1871, under the monarchy. The King of Prussia received the title of Emperor of Germany. Thanks to the huge reparations during the war with France and the advantages of establishing a unified empire, the German economy developed rapidly, rising to the top of Europe. However, the size of the colony of Germany at that time was very small, and not commensurate with its economic and military power. As a result, there was a conflict between Germany and the old empires such as Britain, France, and Russia, which had vast colonial systems around the world. That was the root cause of the outbreak of World War I in 1914. In the beginning, Germany with its powerful and warlike army gained the upper hand. But by 1918, the US participation in the war made the balance of forces in favor of Britain, France, and Russia. The defeats on the battlefield and the misery of the people during the four years of war sparked the November 1918 revolution in Germany. Emperor Wilhelm II fled to the Netherlands, and Germany had to sign an unconditional surrender. After the November Revolution, the Weimar Republic was established. As a losing country, Germany had to bear the heavy burdens of the Versailles Treaty, such as the reduction of territories and the abandonment of colonies, military restrictions, and war reparations. In 1929, the global economic crisis broke out again and dealt another heavy blow to the German economy. Taking advantage of the social unrest, the Nazi Party, led by Adolf Hitler, made great efforts to propagate and incite revenge, advocate fascism for the state apparatus, and establish a public dictatorship. After the overthrow of the Weimar Republic, the Hitler administration intensified preparations for war. On September 1, 1939, German troops entered Poland, and World War II broke out. After that, Hitler invaded much of Europe including France, and penetrated deep into Soviet territory. However, before the strong counterattack of the Soviet Red Army, along with the formation of Allied forces against the Nazis, Nazi Germany was increasingly disadvantaged on the battlefield. Finally, in 1945, Germany was defeated, and Hitler committed suicide in the cellar. After World War II, Germany was occupied by the armies of four countries, Britain, France, the United States, and the Soviet Union. In 1949, in the area occupied by Britain, France, and the United States in the West, the Federal Republic of Germany was established, while in the East, the German Democratic Republic was established with the help of the Soviet Union. This division is a product of the Cold War. In the late 1980s, the collapse of the Eastern European Socialist System affected East Germany. In 1990, Germany was reunified, becoming the Federal Republic of Germany as it is today. Today, Germany always maintains its position as a great power, has the world's fourth largest economy, 
and plays an important role in major international organizations such as the European Union, the United Nations, NATO, and the G7.